is um, always searching for those who will say yes to him. And he tests the yes that you say. You say yes and he tests the yes that you say. And oftentimes it's in the testing of the yes that our heart is revealed. Because unless the yes in our heart is tested, we never really know because we are great at deceiving ourselves. How many of you know that you are great at deceiving yourself? You know, we are all natural born liars and we believe our own lies. I'm wonderful, you know, I'm beautiful. No, you may very well be wonderful and beautiful, but if you, if you get it in such a way that takes you away from the plan and purpose of God and exalts you in your flesh or breaks relationship with other people, that lie it will, will work destruction in you. So God says something to you and then tests what he says. This is an important lesson for us to learn as disciples because we have to learn to love the test. That was a good place to say amen. Because you're not saying amen to me, beloved. You're saying it to him. Because when you learn to love the test, it's because you're saying to the Lord, Lord, it's your truth that I want. That's what I want to say yes to. Not anyone else's truth. In fact, Lord, I don't want to say yes to my truths if my truths are actually lies that I've created or allowed to be created that other people have put upon me to create a wrong image that I see of myself. You understand what I'm saying? We get these images of ourselves. We were created in the image of God. That image got distorted in the fall. And the Bible says that... Um, uh, of Cain and Abel and said that they were in the image of Adam. The image of God had been distorted. So we're in the image of, that, that's put upon us by parents or significant people in our lives or siblings growing up or people in the neighborhood or whatever. And they get all of these images that we've, we have of ourselves. And I believe that tonight God wants to break the wrong image you have of yourself so that you can have the image that God sees you as and you come into that. But you can't come into that true image unless you're willing to let the yes be tested. And, and, and lots of people in church don't want the test. You know, we want the blessing. We want the blessing and God wants to bless us. His heart is to bless us. You know, when you read the creation story and the story of the deception and the fall, you see God cursing the serpent and cursing the earth, but he never cursed Adam and he never cursed Eve. He blessed Adam and Eve when he created them and he never cursed them. Because it's never God's intention to curse us. He will punish us. He will test us. He will rebuke us. He will correct us. He will scourge us. Hebrews chapter 4 talks about those who become the children of God get scourged, get disciplined. How many of you have known the discipline of God? If your hand isn't up, and we said we invite you to come to Jesus tonight <laughs> to learn the discipline of God. Hallelujah. This that's an altar call, right? Uh, yeah, that's a good altar call. Hallelujah. But uh, we'll separate the sheep from everybody else then. Hallelujah. And, you know, we'll put, uh, in many churches, you never hear. Um, you never hear um, about the severity of God. We hear Romans 11 talks about the goodness and severity of God. But we have to learn to revel in the severity of God. We have to learn to revel in the discipline of God. We have to learn to revel in God who just doesn't make things easy for us. We have to learn how to revel in the God who in his love says no to you. We have to learn how to revel and love the Lord our God who tests 